pumping of the blood allows blood to flow to all parts of the body. For this to occur efficiently, pressure is generated due to the muscular contraction of the atria and the ventricles of the heart. Let's look at how this happens. Both the atria contract together and empty blood into the ventricles. The ventricles then contract simultaneously, forcing blood into the arteries that will direct the blood to different parts of the body. Both the atria and ventricles briefly relax before the cycle repeats. When the ventricles contract, blood pressure is relatively high. This is called the systolic pressure. When the ventricles relax, blood pressure is relatively low. This is called diastolic pressure. A stethoscope and sphygmomanometer is routinely used to measure blood pressure. The different sounds of the blood flow through the brachial artery correspond to the contraction and relaxation of the heart. Systolic pressure is measured by applying pressure to the brachial artery through the inflation of the sphygmomanometer's cuff. The pressure in the cuff is then slowly released. As it descends, it reaches a point where blood is able to spurt with each pulse through the constricted artery. This creates a tapping sound. This spurting only occurs when blood pressure is at its highest, which is during ventricular contraction. Diastolic pressure is measured after continuing to let the air out of the cuff. The first moment when sounds are no longer audible indicates that the blood is now flowing continuously through the artery. This gives us the diastolic pressure. Diastolic pressure occurs when the ventricles relax. Posture and proper cuff placement is important when measuring blood pressure. If the patient is not seated in a relaxed position with the arm level to the heart, the blood pressure reading can be artificially high. Also, if the blood pressure cuff is too loose, the blood pressure reading will be artificially high as well. The patient should be seated with their feet flat on the floor. The patient should ideally rest quietly for five to 10 minutes before beginning. The forearm should be relaxed with the palm facing upward, resting on a table or desk that allows the arm to be around heart level. Next, locate the brachial artery pulse by gently placing your index and middle fingers on the inside of the elbow. Look for an arrow or line on the blood pressure cuff that should be lined up with or point to the pulse from the brachial artery. Wrap the cuff around the upper arm so that it's snug but not too tight. A good rule of thumb is you should be able to slip one finger under the blood pressure cuff but not two. The cuff should have direct contact with the skin. The bottom of the cuff should be about one inch above the crease of the inner elbow. The stethoscope is then placed over the spot where you are able to feel the pulse on the brachial artery. Locate the valve which can be found near the mouth of the bulb. Close the valve by turning the screw in a clockwise direction. Then squeeze the bulb quickly to inflate the cuff until the indicator is around 200 millimeters of mercury. Using the stethoscope, Listen carefully for the first audible sound as you slowly release air from the blood pressure cuff by turning the screw counterclockwise. At the same time, carefully watch the gauge and record the readings for the first audible sound and for when the sound stops. The first audible sound is the systolic pressure, which is the top number of blood pressure. When the sound is no longer audible, this gives us the diastolic pressure, which is the bottom number of the blood pressure. Thank you for watching.